If you've ever wondered how driving examiners mark a Queensland driving test and what they will be looking at, then keep watching. So this is the paper that the driving examiners hold when they sit next to you on your practical test day. Let's go through every section of the paper and find out what this is all about. The first section here is related to the privacy statement and there are four important points to know about this section. I summarized them. One, driving examiners use this form to assess your driving ability. Two, a copy of this form will be given to you and your examiner goes through this paper with you. Three, all examiners have access to this form. So let's say if you fail your driving test, the next examiner can have access to this form and they can find out why you failed the test before. Four, this information is not going to be disclosed to another third party unless required by law. Here they put the details of you, your driving structure if you have one, your examiner and also your car. They also check to see if your car is suitable for a driving test and mark one of these boxes here. If it's suitable, you proceed with the test and if it's not, the test will be terminated. A video about the suitability of the car for a driving test is in the making. So if that's something that you are interested to know about, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out. And then they ask you to sign here. Here there are all the traffic situations that they will take you to and when they take you to any specific traffic situation, they tick the related box. For example, when they take you to a roundabout, they tick the roundabout box. In this section, we have maneuvers. We don't worry about the trucks. This video is for cars only, so ignore this part. There are six maneuvers here and the examiners randomly choose two of them for you to do in your test. What are they? Let's go through them one by one. Reverse parking or reverse parallel parking. That's when you stop next to another car, reverse back and park your car behind them. You can download the video for step-by-step -step instructions of this maneuver via the link in the description of this video. Turn around or three-point turn is when you are in a narrow road facing that way and you want to change your direction face the other way. So you go to that side of the road, reverse back to this side and then change your direction to the other side of the road. You can watch this video to see how it's done properly. U-turn is when you need to do a 180 degree rotation in one movement and reverse the direction of your travel like this one for example. Hill start is when they ask you to stop on top of a hill and they ask you to start to drive. So the car shouldn't roll back and you need to drive on the spot. Sometimes they don't necessarily ask you to do this maneuver, but they take you to a hilly road and you stop at a stop sign or a red light and you might need to do a hill start. You can watch this video which goes to a lot more detail about this maneuver. Reversing exercise is when they ask you to stop beside the road and they want you to reverse the car on a straight line for approximately 30 meters. And gear changing, which is a maneuver for only automatic cars. Yes, automatic cars. The examiners might ask you to change the gear to a lower gear and then get back to D again. It's worth to mention two important points here. One, you will be doing two of these maneuvers. One of the maneuvers will definitely have a reversing component. Two, if you live in a remote and a small area where examiners cannot take you to at least 20 of these traffic situations, they compensate for that by asking you to do all these maneuvers. And if there is no hills in your area, they still want you to show them how you do a hill start on a flat road. Just to check to see if you know how to use your handbrake or your full parking brake. Moving on to the next section. Here there are 8 car controls and the examiners ask you about 2 of them randomly again. Mirrors adjustment, high beam, wipers, washers, 
the Mr. Air Conditioning has a light seat adjustment. And also sometimes they ask students about the rear view mirror and glare, which is not listed here. For a more detailed video about this, you can watch this video. And here section D and E are the criteria that the examiners look at in a driving test. They evaluate your driving according to these criteria and they put a final result here with their feedback. So what are these criteria? Some of them are related to manual cars, which obviously you don't need to worry about if you go for an automatic car test. Ancillary controls, clutch, clutch coasting, stalling, accelerator, gears, and so on. In front of them, we have three columns. The first one is non-critical driving error with the number of boxes. The second one is specific repeated driving error. And the last one is critical driving error. So what do they mean? For example, let's take steering control. The examiner asks you to turn left at an intersection. When you turn, the steering wheel is very shaky. You don't turn smoothly. So they put a tick here in this box. One minor driving error for steering control. Then they ask you to turn right. And again, when turning, your steering wheel is not smooth. So they put out a tick or cross here, two minor marks. If that happens for five times, you will get all these five boxes filled and the six mistake goes here. When you get a tick here, this means that this driver keeps making a specific driving error and constantly repeats it. And when you get a tick anywhere in this column, that's a fail in the test. And as you can see here, we have a specific repeated driving error or SRDE, one or more. So they tick this box here and that's a fail in the test. Let's say you get one mark here, two here, three here, one here, one here, and one here. And when we add them all up, you get nine minor errors. Then they tick this box here and that's the fail again. Up until eight minor errors, it's still a pass, but nine or more is a fail. That's too many errors. And if you look at the speed, we have only one box here. And that means there is no second chance for speeding. As soon as, let's say, you go 61 in a 60 zone, you get this box ticked and subsequently this one here. One critical driving error is an instant fail in the test. Something important to mention here is that some driving errors can be non-critical in one situation and critical in another. For example, if you don't indicate when doing a 3.10 in a quiet street, you will only get one minor mark for not indicating. But if you don't indicate at a roundabout and make other drivers confused and create a dangerous situation, that's the critical driving error in the signaling or indicating section of the form. If you notice, there is another section here called general critical driving errors. Any mark in this section is an instant fail as well. The first box is intervention by examiner, and that's any kind of physical or verbal intervention by the examiner. For example, if the driving examiner grabs your steering wheel in a situation like here. Oh, just go a bit that way. Yep. That's an instant fail. Or if the examiner prompts you to stop, for example, in a situation like this one here. Traffic lights, we turn right. Stop here, stop here, stop here. Let's just give way to this guy and then turn. Okay, now let's go. Collision. That's when your car strikes another object. For example, a pole, tree, pedestrian, or another vehicle. Also, mounting the curb is classified as a collision and hence a fail. Dangerous action. Dangerous action is when you do something that causes another road user, including pedestrians, take an evasive action to avoid a collision. For example, merging too slow to highway and causing other cars to brake for you to avoid an accident. Disobeys official direction. Disobeying an official direction by a police officer, school crossing supervisor, or an authorized traffic controller. 
For example, you come across this situation and you don't show any intention of stopping. At the bottom of the paper it says, this report relates only to this test and also this is not a license. Once you do your test and you hopefully pass it, you still need to go through some paperwork at the test center so they issue your driver license. If you would like to have a copy of this driving assessment report sheet, you can download it via the link in the description of this video. Driving in Australia is easy if you know the rules.